Hi there. All right, so I know that I've conducted a few different experiments with transcranial direct current stimulation, basically taking like some kind of an IQ test or, or other cognitively challenging tests, um, and then comparing results either uh, before or after transcranial direct current stimulation to see if the scoring was any different. And consistently, I have always performed better while stimulated, whether or not I, I were, was introduced to the test for the first time while stimulated or not. Um, just to kind of try and control for test wiseness, um, I've always scored better. But it's it's always been that that fast, you know. Take the test, take the test. Maybe maybe as as many times as twice, but that's it. Um, not a whole lot of accurate data there. So I decided to do a little bit longer uh, research and use the Cambridge. Uh, Brain Science website and took their Cambridge Brain Challenge um, over the course of 28 different times uh, in two months. Um, every other time I would be stimulated or not stimulated so as to kind of get an idea of uh, an average of what my scores are when I'm not stimulated and what my scores are when I am stimulated and see if there really is a statistical difference. Um, for starters, I'll say that I plugged in all of my scores into a little program that calculated uh, paired T tests, and uh, it stated there wasn't a significant difference uh, between the two, which is not surprising. So I plugged in all of the data into a line graph, and now I have a visual, visual representation to show you uh, that kind of illustrates um, the power of transcranial direct current stimulation. Uh, to go ahead and let you know, the stimulation was of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Um, I have done some tests with the right anterior temporal lobe um, being stimulated, but that seems to deal more in object recognition, and most of these tests were cognitive challenges involving working memory. Uh, so dorsolateral prefrontal cortex was the area that I was stimulating, and these results I got. All right, the green line is while stimulated. The red line is while not stimulated. As you can see, the green line is always higher over all the test periods until you get to the end where they converge and then that one spike. But for the most part, throughout the entire two, two months of testing, I'm always performing better while stimulated until the end. So what does this tell me? Uh, well, that spike is an anomaly, um, and I don't know if that's because of all the brain enhancement that I've been doing between nootropics and transcranial direct current stimulation, or if that was just a fluke, but uh, that was a moment of clarity, um, and I was performing at a higher level than I normally recall. But other than that, what I gleaned from this is that while stimulating uh, with transcranial direct current stimulation, it appears that it basically cuts the learning curve uh, because what it does is it allows you to go into a brand new skill and uh, takes away a lot of your margin of error. Um, when I was taking the test and I was still pretty unfamiliar with it without stimulation, I was messing up all the time trying to figure out strategies on how to do better. When I was stimulated, the mess ups weren't that great. I was doing great. Uh, and for the most part, I, I hit an average level while stimulated and an average level while not stimulated. Uh, and then over time, I would get better at the tests and my scores while not stimulated slowly started to approach the scores that I had been getting while stimulated all the time. For example, uh, the average score while stimulated uh, in the Cambridge Brain Challenge was 49. Uh, while not stimulated at first, it was at the 44, 45 mark, and then it moved up to 46, and then it moved up to 48. Uh, well, while stimulated, the highest score I ever got was 51. I got that twice. While not stimulated, with the exception of that one anomaly where I made a 56, the highest score I ever got was 50. So when I'm strapped into the machine, no matter what, I always seem to do better. But the difference in how good I do seems to be greater when I'm attacking a brand new skill uh, and much smaller as I get better at that skill. So what that tells me is 
for practical application, you could strap this thing on and like go take the SAT, but I doubt that they would let you. Um, if you were a surgeon, you could put it on and maybe, you know, uh, perform your surgery a little bit better, but I don't think they would let you do that either. The point is, is using it as a device to like boost you in that moment is probably not practically applicable to any situation. However, using it while learning new skills might be exactly the practical application necessary for TDCS. Um, because like I said, it, it, it decreases those uh, those errors allows you to operate like you have some level of skill uh, and then that's of course going to help accelerate the uh, the rate at which you are learning the new skill so for new skill acquisition transcranial direct current stimulation appears to be uh, very very useful um, so that is my conclusion for this you know two month long test um, and it is that transcranial direct current stimulation will increase your ability to acquire new skills more rapidly and uh, much more efficiently. Um, great for college students, great for med students, anybody that's you know learning new stuff and has a has a constant workload involving testing. Uh, probably great for business executives too when you're uh, in an industry where um, acquiring new skills makes you more valuable to the corporation that you work for. Um, 20, 30 minute sessions regularly while learning new stuff or studying um, and then stimulating the corresponding brain region with the transcranial direct current stimulation device uh, would probably be very, very beneficial. So I just wanted to give you an update on that. That's what I've been doing. Um, other than that, I also decided to start taking some nootropics. Uh, I, I used uh, Nupept and DMAE, and I will make a video on a review of Nupept um, later. That's not what this is about. I just wanted to say that I took some other Cambridge challenges um, while stimulated and also on Nupept. Um, I found that subjectively I felt really, really, really enhanced while I was stimulated with transcranial direct current stimulation and while I was on under the influence of nootropics. Um, this is a powerful nootropic and it, it, you know, it, it has a subjective effect on its own. When combining the two, it was great. However, I made the mistake of also trying to uh, use brainwave entrainment and entrain in beta. And I think I've concluded that brainwave entrainment, isochronic tones, interfere with whatever it is that the transcranial direct current stimulation is, is attempting to do. That, uh, the electricity is causing neuronal firing, um, the isochronic tones are doing something to interfere with that because anytime I've done this, uh, when I should have um, performed at a much higher level, I didn't. I ended up actually, what happened was I took the, the, the another set of Cambridge challenges a couple times unstimulated a couple, uh, a couple times, um, one time stimulated and one time stimulated under the influence of nootropics. Now granted it wasn't as many times so I don't have as much of a body of data to work with which is why I'm not showing you the graphs on that because it's not significant enough. Uh, just subjectively from my perspective I've noticed um, that with the scoring I noticed that um, the brainwave entrainment was, was doing something to throw that off. So in conclusion I can say that um, nootropics works really well in conjunction with brainwave entrainment. I've shown that in a past video. Uh, TDCS and nootropics should work well together also. But do not use TDCS and brainwave entrainment together because something about the isochronic tones frequency cancels out the effects of the electricity um, firing neurons in your brain through transcranially. So anyway, hope that you enjoyed. It was fun and uh, stay tuned. I'm sure I'll have some more information about other uh, experiments in the future. Take care.